Before we begin today's video, I would just like to let you guys know about War Thunder's 10th anniversary specials where they're having plenty of discounts, uh, they're introducing the Sturm Tiger, the mouse is coming back, plenty of rare vehicles are coming back, heaps of events and tournaments, all in the link in the description below, of course. Uh, but if you want to buy anything with the sales, use my affiliate link and that will greatly help out the channel. You have no idea how much that means to me. Thank you very much and let's get on with the video. G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a jet that kind of fits the top tier meta, but in a very strange and in somewhat unique way. This is the Harrier GR7, and it fits a weird triad of sorts that I often refer to in terms of top tier jets. And this is sort of like the missiles or weaponry as one, performance as another, that being top speed and turning and energy all combined into one and of course avionics now that's radar rwr and then i put flares in there as well because i consider these as a defensive mechanism if you will how uh, how ready the plane is to defend itself from incoming attacks and in this case here the harrier gr1 uh, gr7 fits a weird spot it fits a really strange niche because it only tops out at 1200 kilometers per hour it doesn't have any afterburning capability so it's not particularly good at high altitude, it's subsonic, and yet it still fits the meta really well. And that's because of the two other halves of the triad, because you only need two to be competitive at top tier. Now, the F-14 has all three, um, and other planes like the Mirage 2000 are pretty close at having all three as well. But the Harrier doesn't. It only has two, and that's, that's why I think it's a good as a step down, although 11.0 is a little low, and we will discuss that in a little bit. But uh, we are looking here at four AIM-9Ls and an absolute buttload of flares and chaff. We have 350 of each, totaling 700, oh, 700. So we have a lot of things at our disposal. We have enough flares for the whole match. We have enough chaff to sort of stave off any missile attacks. Although, I don't know, I don't tend to use chaff that often because it doesn't really work. But... The Harrier GR7 fits that weird niche as a support fighter at this tier, and I really like that. I think it is a really, really positive sort of niche that the Harrier GR7 inhabits. Now, as you can see from the map, I am kind of pushing out in front of my friendlies, but that's okay because as I get to these higher speeds, they're going to start taking over, they're going to start pushing in front. Uh, and of course, while I don't want to be on the very front of the attacks, I can afford to because I'm a little bit slower. And of course, the GR7 has bigger wings than the GR3, so you've got better turning there. It allows you to actually dogfight things for once in your life. The GR7 is pretty much good at that treetop level stuff, and that's my favorite way of avoiding things like AIM-54 spam or any other semi-active or active radar homing missiles. I'm keeping pretty low here, and I'm trying to avoid my opponents. I'm trying to avoid that radar detection, and if I do, I'm going to try and be as low as I can so I don't get a patent lock. I'm also sort of scooting out to the side so that the enemies don't really take a look at me with the radar where they see that big mass of incoming enemy aircraft and go for that instead. So I'm just sort of hanging out on the periphery and I'm going to wait for someone to look at someone else before I use an AIM-9 on them because the AIM-9L, whilst it is very good, you can still flare it. You turn off your afterburner, you progressively flare every couple seconds and then the missile loses its target because you can still distract it. The M9L is very good, but you can still get out of the way. Now, the Harrier has plenty of these flares, and of course, I don't really want to be using them as much as I can, but we have A10s here, and this appears to be uh, a full down tier. Now, these are, I believe, I think this was last patch, or before the battle rating updates, uh, but my point still stands. There hasn't even been a major change in the last sort of three, what, three months to this battle rating, so we're gonna sort of discuss it as is. The A-10 is looking pretty juicy here, but unfortunately the SU-22 yoinks him nice and clean. This Jaguar is coming in pretty quick, and you can see the harsh aspect that I engage the Jaguar in. And this is one of the things that's good about the AIM-9L. You can engage at a steeper angle. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to engage at a head-on angle, because just because a missile is all aspect, it does, doesn't mean, you know, head-ons only. You can go for those higher aspect shots and you can still make a target and you can still land it very easily. And again, the Jaguar E is now second victim. 
I've noticed the F14 above, and I've noticed that F5. Now, the F5 is going to be a bit of a threat, because at those really low speeds, he is going to absolutely tear me to shreds. But at the higher speeds, I can kind of compete. And this is what I like about the uh, Harrier GR7. Those bigger wings mean that you have a lot more lift, and you have a lot more turning capabilities. And this is really, really nice. I've noticed that the F14 there is posing a bit of a threat, and I've got AI coming in, which is oh so nice. I love it. Oh, dear. It's, it's pretty terrible because the AI are very, very frustrating. They take away from the battle, but um, just as they've taken away from this video, the F-14 does not take away from me, um, but it, it is quite a distraction, I have to admit. The F-14 here, looking very juicy, he's very distracted, and this is what the AIM-9Ls are best for. Taking out those un... Uh, sort of... Those un no, not paying attention targets, let's just say. Uh, F5C goes for a cheeky head-on, almost clips me there. And you can see the amount of speed that I'm bleeding in these turns, all the way down to about 550. And then the F5C gets you going there by a missile by the MLD. This plane is a support fighter. Do not get caught out in multiple engagement situations unless you have a lot of teammates around you. And this is where this plane will do well. You'll do just fine in a case where you just have plenty of people around you because you have the turning capability, you have the flares, and you have the missiles to sort of fight back where you need to. But this plane, in a case where you're being boom and zoomed by multiple planes, or you have people coming out from altitude, or any other situation like that, you are going to find yourself struggling because this plane is not designed to take on multiple targets at once. You know F-35, you know F-22, and you you can't just do that. I mean. Even some of the other planes in the game that are, that are currently here are theoretically able to take on more than one target. But, you know, theory and practice, right? You, you don't want to put yourself in that situation, even though your plane can take it. Um, and th that's, like, one of the reasons why we climb in, in uh, props. Like, you know, it's a zero. What are you going to do? Exactly. Energy trap. And the Harrier actually falls into the same pitfall by being able to be energy trapped and being unable to sort of get away. Even, even from, you know, missiles that are susceptible to flares. You have got the ability to get away from them, but you know, you only have so many, and of course you can only pay attention to so many targets at once. Your enemy also has semi-active radar homing missiles, and if you're traveling at, you know, above 300 kilometers an hour, that pulse Doppler radar is going to pick you up. So you can't escape. Now, speaking of radar locks, we have a pulse Doppler radar that is definitely locking onto us here, but you can see that I've managed to sort of cling to the silhouette of the, uh, of the landscape and I'm using that terrain to my advantage, sort of checking back, seeing if I can spot with my Mark 1 eyeball where the enemy is, uh, but I can't. So I'm going to kind of move on. I'm going to stick with my team because if I get caught out, this is going to be a big, big problem. And there he is. There's the F-14. He's coming out from behind. And I would much rather him be from behind um, than him being head-on because in a head-on situation, you can get that uh, missile off, whereas in a, in a tail-on situation, it's only going to be one of the... Uh, air to air you know aim 9 l's uh, aim 9 h's rather um, and anyway i'm gonna turn around put a 9l down range and if he's not paying attention then he's gonna pay a repair cost because the 9l has a lot of range and even though you're very slow the missile doesn't get a very good start you can still make plenty of way with the f14 uh, even though he's so fast but it looks like he's just managed to avoid it so I'm probably going to send another one his way if the uh, MiG-23 doesn't present as a juicier target. And there we go. Another high aspect shot. Going to go again with the uh, second missile for the F-14. And because he's not paying attention, he does end up paying that repair cost. And of course, I managed to save a teammate in the meantime. Another F-14A. This guy looks like he's uh, putting flares out. So I'm going to go for that rear aspect, aspect shot where he's not going to be as susceptible to flares. Um, but it looks like it's going to be guns, guns, guns anyway. And the F-14 is starting to pop his wings out. It looks like it's just, but it's just not enough for the GR-1 or the GR-7 because the GR-7 has those extended wings. And I've, of course, I forgot about the additional guns. The additional guns are 25 mil cannons. Uh, they're pretty slow. They're pretty strange. And it looks like I got very lucky there with that pulse Doppler. Very, very lucky. But... Uh, you do have no traces. It's basically like Hispanos all over again. Uh, kind of cool, actually. But it does make you hone in your skills a little bit more than you otherwise would. Uh, there's another quick and dirty game. And you can see, again, once more, support fighter role is coming out in, in droves. Because this plane is, like I've said, a support fighter. And that's where it inhabits that niche. It's, the, it's not the sort of pushing the front. You're not the spearhead of the engagement. You're not meant to. You're meant to sit back with your teammates and assist them. 
you're meant to sort of preserve your teammates because again the more you can preserve your teammates the better off you'll have a match you'll have simply by virtue of there being more enemies on the battlefield to uh for the, for the enemy team to to engage so they're less likely to target you and this means that you have the opportunity to sneak in and get even more kills so moving on to the final game, we are, you know, on another snow map. Snow maps seem to be good, but more importantly, this is a full down tier, and full down tiers are a bloodbath for the GR7. And, and like I said at the beginning of the video, I think the GR7 is a little bit low at 11.0. I think 11.0 means that it faces 10.0s that are just, you know, not as capable as the GR7. They don't have flares by default, and I think anything facing all uh, sort of AIM-9L type missiles should kind of have either flares by default or have something to compensate that low performance. Now this F4C is a poor little soul who, you know, doesn't really get much in the way of, a, of love at all. But the A5C, uh, no love at all for the A5C. Um, and Dr. Fauci here is about to get a little ouchy. It looks like he's going to cop the AIM-9L. He's going into the vertical and that's going to be a very, very easy sell. Uh, not really. The A5C manages to get away. And that's pretty bad for us because the A5 has got some pretty nasty stuff. I waste another missile here and I'm down to my last one. So I have to use guns here. And we've got an F5C coming in. I'm bleeding speed. It's not looking good. The MiG-21 almost gets us. Again, not paying attention. Almost paid the repair cost. But it's an SPSK. He's a premium. He can get that little missile. There he goes. It's not going to uh, be good for him. But it's not really that good for us either. Because we've got several enemies that are sitting around us. And they're pretty much, you know, they've got the capability to take us out. One of the F5Cs is down, but the A5 is coming in very quickly. I'm going to spray some 25 mils. Nothing getting there anytime soon. But the A5C's got really poor flight performance. And he's put himself in front of my guns because he's a big, fat Chinese MiG-19. And he's not going to get very far as long as I can get my guns on. Uh, he's going to come around. And am I going to get myself kill number two here? Probably not for a while. Uh, this plane is very much... It's tough to get those 25 mils on, but when you do, they do something like that. And that's really, really nice to see. Just as the enemy planes start coming in, and again, I've got my team around me, which is the important thing. You've got to have your mates with you, because otherwise you will actually suffer. Like, it'll be genuinely painful. So keep them in mind keep your teammates in mind follow your teammates around or at least stay in a position where you can help your teammates out now this a10 is sort of just able to take out that f5c i was going to put the one down there if he wasn't able to take it out himself but we've got a couple of other enemies coming in this is an f5e and of course uh there's an f5c but there's also an spsk and the spsk we'll get to later the f5c here is looking pretty sad he's very very slow and i've got 30 rounds left so I've got to be very frugal with my guns. Of course, I spray them all and I manage to clip the F5C, turn him into dust and repair cost. But the F5E is the last one left. And he is looking at our A10 who we need to save. Because if we don't, we are all on our own. As uh, Lone Wolf55's name suggests. We're going to try and be the bait here. Hopefully the a A10 is, is sort of going to take that. Hopefully he's going to, you know, understand. He's not the best shot. And we're going to try and make it easier for him. So hopefully we can get him to latch onto our six. Or at least, you know, try and get the F5 to put himself in an even more compromising position in order to get away from us. The A10 is a very heavy plane. It doesn't quite have the same energy retention as the F5. And of course, if I had saved my guns a little bit more or saved my missiles, we would have had him here. And it's really disappointing because, you know, you've got plenty of, of flares. But you're just lacking them guns and uh, lacking, you know eight missiles like everyone else has got but it's still good this is still a plane that you can really lay the herd on uh, especially for planes like the f5 i find that the f5e tends to be a little bit more uh of a of a sort of heavier plane than the gr7 so if you do end up fighting gr in a uh, gr7 in your f5 uh, understand that the f5c uh you will compress but remember that straight wing does pay dividends as time goes on. In the F5E, I have managed to pretty much out dogfight every single one. Um, so if you guys have any different stories, again, let me know in the comments. So our last enemy is here, MiG-21 SPSK, and it looks like he's heading towards us a little bit. Uh, I'm not really sure if he realizes what he is getting himself into, and I don't even know if he's got flares. So uh, we're gonna not send one away, but we are gonna get a critical hit. And that critical hit is just enough for us to pay attention now to the uh, 
F5. I think I've put him in a flat spin, and the F5 is spraying from three kilometers out. Very ambitious indeed, but I'm going to turn away, go for the re-engage, and again, we're going to go for that medium altitude dogfighting here. Uh, the F5 might end up winning, uh, but I guess it's whoever has the biggest wingspan will end up winning, and whoever has the lightest wing loading. And I actually don't know who that is, so let's find out. The F5 is putting himself in a couple of pretty shitty situations, um, and he's not turning to fight me either, so I'm pretty convinced that I've either got this one, or he's throwing, or, or something like that. Um, I'm going to go for a couple of little sprays there with guns, but ultimately it's going to be the missiles that are going to deal the killing blow, unless he ends up evading them all, and in that case I will have to use the missiles as tools to get him in a compromising situation. Now I've put the uh, ball sight nice and far off, He's not spraying anymore. He's probably run out of flares. And again, I I don't know. I feel like he threw that one. But he could, he could have had me if he had paid a bit more attention. Maybe he'd put himself down at lower altitude. Who knows? The uh, F, F5E, it kind of kind of threw that one there. But the GR7, again, proving it's worth with a little ace. So, ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for today for the GR7. Uh, if you guys would like to use my in-game decal, that greatly helps me out. It's probably the single best thing that you can do for the channel if you have some money to spare and are willing to buy something from the Gaijin store. If not, of course, there's Patreon. And of course, if you can't afford anything, don't buy anything. But leave a like, leave a comment, you know, stick around, subscribe. It's great. You'll love it here. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I sincerely appreciate your time. Thank you for watching to the end of the video. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.